As Honorable Shivambo comes to the podium, please members join me in welcoming the Dominican School for the Deaf Children from Vertibom in Weinbeck who are there in the gallery. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Honorable Shivambo. Go ahead. No, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. I think let us clarify this thing of prescribed assets which has been mentioned by the speaker who just left the podium now. The reality is that all white people in South Africa are beneficiaries of prescribed assets by the apartheid government, which had channeled all pensions to benefit the white minorities when sanctions were being imposed against apartheid. They utilized those prescribed assets to benefit themselves. So all white people are beneficiaries of prescribed assets. And when we want to use that for the benefit of black people, they want to cry foul and act as if there's a crisis. Now, coming back to the topic. Order, honorable members, order. You coming back to the topic. Now, shout. Commander in Chief of the Economic Emancipation Movement, the Ministry and Department of Trade and Industries are, as, is one of the most dependable colonial administrators in post-1994 setup. So whatever they do, whether it's industrial policy or trade policy or issues that deal with tax avoidance, what they seek to achieve is to protect the white minority economic control of South Africa. So the Minister of Trade and Industry comes here to have some neo-colonial exuberance in speaking about our new colonial status in the so-called uh, new deal with uh, Britain or the UK in general. The reality is that there won't be anything fundamentally shifting in terms of the colonial status that South Africa occupies in its trade relationship with the United Kingdom. So what that trade relationship will do is to continue to benefit the minority white agricultural practitioners and the European companies that are invested in the manufacturing sector. So it is to say that now that the ultra-nationalists in the UK have relinquished their pan-continental project by voting to leave the European Economic Community. South Africa goes to beg that please don't affect the white minority controllers of the economy in South Africa. Allow them access to continue exporting goods and services in terms of what should happen. Let us tell you a simple story about the companies that are listed in the London Stock Exchange that do business here in South Africa. One is that majority of them uh, are, are, are incorporated in the tax havens, in the British Islands, in Cayman Islands, in Guernsey, in Bermuda, in Cayman Islands. That is, that is the reality of these companies. And they control more than one million square kilometers of land in sub-Saharan Africa. That is four times the size of the United Kingdom. So these are the companies that we are seeking to protect. So they come here, they are British companies, they are listed in the London Stock Exchange. And then when they export goods and services and products to the UK, we say that those are South African exports. So the colonial relationship that was created under apartheid is not being restructured, it's not being fundamentally challenged. It is that the continuation in terms of uh, what is happening. And which are these companies? It's Anglo-American, which uh, basically has owned South Africa for a very long time. It's London Mine, Lonmin, which uh, together with the ANC government killed workers in Marikana in 2012. It's Rio Tinto, it's Glenco, which is one of the most sophisticated criminal syndicate in the world in terms of uh, what happens. So the relationship between South Africa and the UK is still a neo-colonial relationship. And this new trade agreement does not fundamentally change and even shift that. If you check the basket of the things that we export to the UK, it's semi-processed and raw materials in most instances. And we bring from the UK the finished goods and services, machinery for medical purposes and photographic purposes, because we are not manufacturing anything here in South Africa. We are, we, we, we are, we are basically protecting the same colonial relationship that existed under apartheid. Now, what must be done, what is to be done? 
One is that South Africa must redefine its colonial relationship with the UK uh, in both the trade uh, and, and, and industrial policy so that we trade on an equal basis. Two is that South Africa should gain strategic control and ownership of our mineral resources. Because majority of our mineral resources, the relatives including coal, are owned by the LSE listed companies. It's not very difficult to extract coal for domestic consumption, even for export purposes. But it's the London companies that are owning these uh, uh, mineral uh, strategic resources. But South Africa should build internal capacity to beneficiate its natural resources. And then we must conduct thorough audit of all the companies that are incorporated in the tax havens. Because basically, these are companies that are what we're protecting now. And we must build proper domestic capacity to drive industrial expansion and stop this thing of giving billions of rents and subsidies to European companies that come here and then when they export back to their home countries, we claim that these are South African exports. So this excitement, the new colonial exuberance of the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry does not fundamentally shift the economic basis of South Africa. It is just to protect white economic interest and that is what has to be dealt with. And that can only be achieved by removing the neo-colonial ANC from power because it looks like they have not divorced themselves well, from the earlier years of 1912 of sending expired. deputations and petitions to the Queen Your in England to expired. ask for space in the Honourable colonial Member, temple. Thank you very much. Time has expired. Honourable Plengwa, please take your seat. What's yours, Honourable Member? What are you rising on? Thank you, Speaker. I'm sorry to interrupt the Speaker at the podium. Um, when the Honourable Shabambu walked past this, this bench here, yes. he turned back and said to the Honourable Milam, and I, I really don't want to use this word in the House, it was F.U. quite clearly, and it's quite shocking that, that a so-called Honourable Member can behave that way in this House and address an Honourable Member in that fashion. Okay. Thank you, House Chair. Yeah, Honourable Shivambo, did you say that? Honourable Deputy Speaker, I did not say it. Okay. I wish I did. Yeah. Honourable member, uh, honourable members, uh, we will check that and uh, come back to the house if necessary. We'll do that. Honourable members, let's not forget that language that is horrible is inappropriate in the house. Let's not get involved in those games.